year, the biggest, most exciting event of the year, the 66th FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations. This year we're at the Lommel Circuit in Belgium, which is renowned for its challenging, deep, sandy conditions. Team USA are the ones to beat, and time will tell whether their two weeks additional prep can take them to eight consecutive victories. But it's not going to be easier with a field of top European riders doing all they can to secure the win for themselves. So sit back and enjoy the 2012 Motocross of Nations. This year's Motocross of Nations then comes from Lommel in Belgium, just down the road from where it all began in 1947. Back then it was in Duinrel in the Netherlands. This weekend though, it's in Belgium. The first event won in 1947 by Great Britain, but the American team, Team USA, have the most victories, 22 under their belt. GB have 16, Belgium 14, and the Belgians will be trying to look at at least getting on the third step of the podium, but for sure they'll be going for the victory. It's not going to be easy for Team USA. Those guys, Ryan Dungey, Blake Baggett, and Justin Barsha would never have ridden anything like this back home in the USA. So whichever way you look at it, it's going to be a very interesting weekend here in Belgium. Our final track walk of the season brings us to the very tough, demanding circuit of Lommel in Belgium for the FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations. And while the Europeans are pretty familiar with this circuit, this place has actually undergone quite a few changes, more notably the start and the first turn that follows. But before we go into detail about the circuit changes here, let's take a look on board in more detail. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony Gairoli, I'm, I'm riding from Italy. Hi, I'm Gauthier Poulin, number six, riding for Team France. Hey, my name is Ken Roxen, and you're watching the GoPro course preview. The track over here in Lommel, Belgium, is totally different than uh, any other track. The sand is really groundless, I would say, you know, not like in Southwick, how you have a hard base. All right, here we go. Long start straight, heading into that, that little single going to get pretty deep right there on the right hander. We have some uh, single jumps right here onto the tabletop. Pretty fun jump right there. This is actually a really fun part of this whole track. We have a little single and then we go into this long whoop section. You can actually triple in as you can see. Double out. Right corner again onto the finish line straight. You can see the monster station on the left. Over the finish line jump. Some long right and left corners, you know, it's pretty wide too, but by the end of the day, you'll de definitely see us using the whole track, of course, because the rougher it gets, you know, the, the better the outsides are gonna get. Now we come into a tight spot of the track. We have a left, right chicane. This is basically in those tight spots, you'll, the insides will probably be the only lines we're gonna take, so it, by the end of the day, it will look gnarly right there. Little scrub. Goji and Tony coming by. Actually, they're always getting some ruts and bumps, so really hard to keep the bike under control. Nice triple jump. Got a few singles again right here. Really deep there. This is one of my favorite parts too. It's really cool to see everyone out there hanging over their rails and showing us lap times and stuff. All right, guys, this was your GoPro course preview. My name is Ken Roxen, riding for Team Germany number 20, and I'll check you guys later. The FIA Monster Energy Motocross Nations is unique. There's no other race like it in the world. It's a team event, country versus country. And the point scoring for a start is back to front, which means one for a win, two points for second, three points for third. The qualifying races, the gate positions were drawn by ballot. The FIM choosing the countries out of the hat for the riders to go and choose their gate positions. Of the 34 teams entered, 20 teams qualified, the last which goes through from the B final on Sunday morning. 
For the race itself, there are three races. The first being MX1, MX2 riders together. The second, MX2 and MX Open. And the third being MX1 and MX Open. That gives six scores. The five top scores count, which means you can drop your worst result. And as a result of that, the lowest points win. So, who will win the 2012 Motocross of Nations this year? That's the big question. The Americans have won the last seven. They're looking for their eight. But it's not going to be easy here this weekend in Lommel. First qualifying race got underway and that was for the MX1 riders and it was Max Nagel who charged into the lead but he was closely followed by Antonio Cairoli of Italy. So this stage it was Germany v Italy. Belgium's Clement de Salle was down in third place. The bike you saw there, the one of the Swiss rider Arno Tonus picking up a broken leg in that corner after being hit by another rider as he fell on lap one. Tony Cairoli then switched from one side of the track to the other. Eventually he found his line, picked his moment Nagel made a mistake, Cairoli was through. But it wasn't straightforward there from uh, Cairoli because at the midpoint of the race, after leading for about five laps, Max Nagel was back through and then Cairoli found another way back and it turned out that it was a mechanical problem or a slight problem with the bike, but he went on to win ahead of Max Nagel, Dassault and Paulan with the Russian Bobrashev in fifth. Ryan Dungey, the American, was in sixth. The MX2 qualifying race though, Ken Roxon took the whole shot and led every single one of the 12 laps. Number 14, Jeremy Van Horbeek of Belgium was second. Blake Baggett, the American, started in sixth and worked his way up to third by the time the chequered flag fell. Having a first hand here of how tough the circuit was going to be possibly for the rest of the weekend. Jeremy Van Horbeek here in second for Team Belgium, riding a great race but no match for Ken Roxon, the former world champion from 2011. And it was Ken Roxon who did the MX2 class victory, winning for Germany. And uh, that second place from Nagel and a win from Roxen meant that they would already be qualified as the best team. In the open qualifying heat, number three, Justin Barsha, got the whole shot. And then he was caught and passed by Jeffrey Hurlings after about four laps. And then he made a mistake, turned right a little bit too steeply into one of the corners. And then eventually when he picked himself up, it was deemed that there was outside assistance. And so Justin Barsha, who tried to remount the track here and failed miserably, eventually came home in sixth position, but then was disqualified for outside assistance. But the two scores from his fellow countrymen meant that they would still qualify anyway. But Jeffrey Hurlings, despite riding with a little bit of arm pump and a bit of spike setting problems, won from Dedeika and Leoc was third. fourth time at Nations but your first time in the sand. A lot of the Euros saying you guys might struggle this year but how's the preparations gone? Uh, the preparation's been great. We actually came over a little bit early to get some time and get a little bit better with bike setup if we could and uh, it's been awesome. We kind of got a, a bit of every kind of sand here uh, all around uh, this area so it's, it's been a lot of fun. Definitely heard a lot about Lamo. Definitely um, sounds like a really physical physically tough track so it's um, it's going to be a challenge you know all of USA we know this but it's a challenge we all look forward to and you know at the end of the day as, as long as we do the best we can and work together as a team you know I think uh, I think we should be good. We had a chance to get on the track here on part of the track on Friday last week and then we went to two other tracks uh, Vegel in the Netherlands and uh, Gravenbroy in uh, Germany and uh, I think it's a good thing that uh, we had a chance to do that uh, and get used to sand and uh, the weather and uh, get our bikes, you know, working in these conditions. The riders, they race against each other pretty hard in the U.S. Uh, every weekend. And then from one weekend to the next, you have to be teammates, you know, it's kind of feels a little bit strange. And so we go, got over that uh, initial uh, cool uh, factor and, uh, and they, they're bonding together pretty well from what I've seen and, uh, and I'm looking for a good weekend. Like it's your second time at Nations. Compared to last year, how are you feeling? Are you feeling a bit more relaxed coming into this weekend? Yeah, definitely uh, a little bit more relaxed, but uh, also, you know, the feelings are still there of, uh, of wanting to win and, you know, having uh, Team USA on your back and representing. But uh, being the second year, I definitely think that I know what to expect and I'm definitely ready. 
and you've been in Europe now for a couple of weeks. Have you guys been having fun? Yeah, no, we definitely have been having fun in Europe. We've got to ride here at the racetrack, and we also have rode two other practice tracks. We got to do a little bit of testing and just get uh, get some things worked out. So we're uh, we're excited and we're all ready. Justin, it's your first time here at Nations. Have the other guys told you what you can expect this weekend? Um, yeah, a little bit. Expect uh, craziness, lots of fans, lots of fun, but uh, really looking forward to it. So ecstatic to be on Team USA. We're going to do our best and try to win. And we're used to seeing you going butter bar with Blake. How has the transition been over to being now teammates? It's actually really good. You know, we have a job to do and we know what we have to do and we're here to have fun and try to win a race and it's good. You know, we're all having a great time and bonding pretty well, actually. One of the favourites for a top three this weekend, certainly a top five. With the impressive Jeffrey Hurlings in their team, it's the Team Netherlands. We caught up with them earlier. Marcel, you've got a great choice of riders this year for this particular Nations in the Sand. Yeah, for sure. We uh, we got Jeffrey and we got Glenn and Mark, and at the moment I think uh, the best three guys for uh, for the Netherlands. So uh, it should be good. Mark, you're no stranger to a nations or two, but what are you expecting from the team this year? Uh, well, it's difficult, you know, for me. Well, it's it's not difficult for me because we have Jeffrey, so all the pressure is on him. Well, I think so because uh, I think he can go for a one-one here. You know, people say uh, this or that, but he is. I know how to ride sand and how, what he does. I don't know how he do it also because I watch him a lot, and he is uh, outstanding in the sand. And uh, yeah, I hope we get good starts and everything like that. And, and Glenn is going to be fast as well. And uh, I hope we can go to the podium Sunday. Glenn, it's your first nations. How are you feeling? Yeah, this is an amazing feeling, you know, uh, to get picked by the federation. It's always good, you know, and. Um, yeah, I really want to do a good job here and uh, it's, it's a big sand track, it's a bit fast but uh, I think it's not a problem for us and uh, yeah, with Jeffrey and Mark I think we may, we'll make a good chance for, for uh, top 3 or maybe top 5, so we are happy with that. We're back down on the start line for the final qualifying race of the day. Jeffrey Hurlings, you've had a great season. We saw you decimate the field in Lirop earlier this year and then go on to win the World Championship. We're in the deep, deep sand of Lommel, need we say any more? Well, I'm just going to try to do my best for my country and obviously for myself. Hope to have an individual win tomorrow and I'm super pumped about how the season went. I had a great season, won a lot of races, so I couldn't be even more thankful. I never did it without Rebel KDM. They were, they were doing amazing for me, so big cheers to those guys and uh, hope to not let my team and my country on this weekend. So Germany took that top spot in qualifying, followed by the home nations, Team Belgium and Italy in third. Defending champions USA down in sixth. Join us after the break for race one, MX1 and MX2. And it's not very often the opportunity to ride your home nation comes around. How are you feeling this weekend? Are you more nervous? Uh, no, more relaxed. I uh, went uh, home and sleep there and just had some fun. I uh, have a friend with me the whole time, so uh, just laughing and uh, walking around. So that's the best thing to do. And It's Belgium here and hopefully going to be enough spectators to cheer us on to the top. Joel, you have a very strong team this year. At the very least, are you looking at the podium? Uh, podium, yeah, but second and third would uh, feel like uh, really a uh, disappointment. It's clear, we go for the win. We have a strong team and, uh, yeah, of course, podium. Uh, we would Every year we would be happy with the podium, but not this year. We're only happy with the highest step on the podium. home nations are you more excited for this event yeah i'm more excited definitely it's the biggest event of, of the year you know and uh it's home 
uh, home crowd. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward and uh, I just uh, hope we can do it. Clermont, nice finish in the World Championship this year. What are you expecting from Team Belgium and Nations? Yeah, my finish in the World Championship was okay, but uh, you know, still second position. So I, I'm working to be first, but it's not, not so easy. About uh, Team Belgium, uh, we are expecting to, to win, sure. You know, uh, I think we, are, we have a team uh, consistent and can hope a good result. Yeah. And do you think the fact that it is your home nations, we're on the sand track, it gives Team Belgium an advantage? Yeah, you know, riding sand track is like uh, really uh, particular. So I think it's we have advantage because we have, like I said, we have a consistent team and can hope to, to have a really good result of the team with that. And yeah, we are really close of home. And yeah, sand sand race in mix of nation is not often that we are winning deep sand for for that. So yeah, it will be exciting to see. Here's how the riders qualified then, all the countries, Germany first, from Belgium, Italy, the Netherlands, France, Great Britain, USA, Estonia, they were your top eight teams and they were the first riders to go to the gate. Of course, two riders per nation in the grid, so uh, the first 20 nations would line up first and then of course the second rider from each nation alongside as and wherever there was space. The gate drops here in the first moto, MX1 and MX2 and it is a great start from one of the KTMs. Might be, oh, it is Max Nagel, number 19. Cairoli in there in second. Rui Gonzalez trying to go around the outside and takes the lead, actually. So as they go through turn three in the bomb hole, it's Rui Gonzalez. Tony Cairoli dives past Max Nagel. Nagel third, Paulan in fourth position. And we're on board with Gautier Paulan now as he comes through the first rhythm section. That'll get really chewed up through there. There's Tassau in fifth place. Then probably Tenor Lee, I can think that was. Over the finish line jump for the first time. And the riders in MX1 and MX2. The 450s versus the 250s. Two riders per nation. Antonio Cairoli in this race with Alessandro Lupino. Rugon Salvez out there leading this one. His teammate Paolo Alberto. But coming round to the tough rhythm section. Cairoli looking to make a move. Doubles his way in at the end of the straight and flies into the lead. So Italy, they lead this first race here, but not necessarily the overall classification. Oh, we've got two riders down. The 35 is one of them. That's uh, Jeremy Sewer. Couldn't quite see who the other one was. Might have been Evan Havey, actually. Maybe. But here's Rugon Salvez coming under pressure for Max Nagel. Nagel going through in a second. And he's got Gautier Paulan there as well. But Gonzalez on the white machine from Portugal. Has to move and yield in the end. Oh, he makes a mistake and that'll allow Paulan through. Paulan eventually goes through, or does he? Well, yeah. Ran the outside at turn two. So it's Cairoli, Nagel, Paulan, Gonzalez. And we've got Roxen in there as well on the 250. So the first MX2 guy for Team Germany. And Lupino's gone down. So this is not good news for Tony Cairoli. Alessandro Lupino still down. There's Roxen going past Rui Gonzalez. And that puts him up into fourth. De Sal going through on Gonzalez as well. Moves into fifth place. So Gonzalez dropping down the leaderboard at the moment. Ryan Dungey, meanwhile, he's now in sixth position for Team USA. So the defending champions. And Blake Baggett, nowhere to be seen, really, outside the top 20 at the moment. So not a good first race for Team USA. Well, they try to come out here for preparation two weeks before this race, immediately after the last US National. But there's a difference between riding it with just three or four guys going around a track and 120 guys, as we will have this weekend in all classes. Team France look on. Olivier Robert in the hat. As Gauthier Paulin continuing. And also Marvin Muscan. Marvin Muscan on the MX2 machine. Down in 13th place at the moment. 
got uh, a battle on his hands here. Look like the 55 of Martin Bar of, North, of Ireland, sorry. That's Ken Roxon having a great ride. Won a, an MX2 Grand Prix here back in 2009. Or in 2010, sorry. But the German backing up. There's Ryan Dungey. He's in sixth place. Red Bull KTM, American Outdoor Champion this year. On that 450 KTM, that's Evgeny Bobrashev just behind him in seventh, number 43. Then the uh, number 85 of Josh Coppins of New Zealand. In eighth, 25, Mark Deruva down in ninth place. And then we've got the number 14 of Van Horbeek of Belgium in tenth. So Belgium have two guys in the top ten. Germany have two guys in the top ten. There's Mark Deruva, side panel hanging off the side of that Ice One racing Kawasaki. The rider from the Netherlands. There's Commander Sal. Number 15 on that yellow Suzuki riding 14 Belgium. In fourth place now. Oh, round uh, Dungey. Dungey picking himself up. So Dungey's had a fall. And I think Bobrashev may have gone through. So if that's the case, Dungey being dropped down to seventh position. With just a few laps remaining in this race. So he really needs to try and pick the pace back up here, Ryan Dungey of Team USA. Blake Baggett, meanwhile, up into 13th position. His MX2 teammate, but Tony Cairoli picking his way through, opening up uh, quite a commanding lead. 20 seconds now, that gap between him and Gauthier Paulin of France. Max Nagel, the German, is in third position. Commander Sout still down in fourth with Roxon of Germany in fifth. Through the rhythm section for the final time, number 46, Antonio Cairoli. Rounds out the final turn. He's going to light the candles here. And he's going to hit the Monster Energy finish line jump. He takes the victory in the first race. But how does that stack up in terms of the overall nations after Moto number one? Germany looking good. Belgium looking okay as well. Tony Cairoli, though. Here's the race classification. Cairoli wins it from Gauthier Paul and Max Nagel. Clement de Salle, Ken Roxon of Germany. Russia's Evgeny Bobrashev is sixth. Ryan Dungey of USA seven. And Tommy Searle down in eighth. Ninth for Mark Deruva of the Netherlands and tenth for Jeremy Van Horbeek of Belgium. Blake Baggett down there in 14th look. In terms of the nation's classification after race one then. Germany on eight points, Belgium on 14, France on 21, tied with the USA, with Russia fifth, Great Britain sixth, ahead of the Netherlands and Ireland. Very well placed for those guys at the moment. The Irish team representing there, Martin Barr and Graham Irwin. good you know I, I, I had a good start and then uh, tried to make some good laps and uh, I get some gap uh, to Max Nagel like five seconds then uh, I was watching some different li lines in the track and uh, uh, I made a few mistakes and uh, got here come really close Poland and um, I tried to to stay on the same gap uh, with him like three four seconds for a few uh, for a moment and then uh, step it up a little bit and uh, win with a good gap uh, I think last motor gonna be really rough and uh, I'm looking forward uh, to, to battle with uh, Erlings, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a good race and I hope also Italy don't, uh, don't have uh, more DNF, otherwise we are out from the competition, but uh, let's cross the finger and we'll see if we can make it to the top five. So far so good then for Tony Cairoli on a personal level, but not if Alessandro Lupino can't make any more uh, action out on the track, but uh, his teammate Davide Guneri, though, he'll also be digging deep for Team Italy. But it's Germany in the driving seat after race number one. Welcome back to part three. So far, it's been an amazing weekend. Now, they finished second last year. They're again one of the favorites this weekend. It's Team France.
Olivier, you have a strong team this year, but there was a last minute change. Why was that? Well, sometimes we have injury problems, but this year it's not the case. And then after the result, we take the best result from the championship. And after what happened in Lyrop, we decided to change the team. And what are you hoping for this weekend? Well, we've been on the podium for many years now, but of course, we always hope for a victory. First of all, I'm really happy to be back in Europe, and uh, it's nice to see everybody from GPs. And uh, yeah, Lomel, we have uh, yeah good remember, and uh, I won the GP in 09, and then in 2010 I finished third. So yeah, very looking for this race. Uh, we came here earlier to test the bike and set up the bike better for the sun, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. We have a good team with Gucci and Xavier, so. I really like the team this year and uh, there is a good atmosphere too and yeah, excited. Xavier, it's the final race of the year but the biggest. How is the feeling, atmosphere with the team? Uh, the atmosphere is really good with, uh, with my teammates, uh, Gauthier and Marvin. Uh, I'm really proud to be in the French team and yeah, we hope to get a good result uh, on Sunday. For GP we are alone and here it's a race team so we have to make a good result for all the team and uh, to give the best all three riders. I'm really happy to be here with Marvin Muskan and Xavier Borg. Uh, it's a big bonus for us you know, to be uh, here at, at the MX of Nation for the French team. Uh, I was racing this year in MX1. I'm here racing in Lomel for the MX1 class also. So I was racing in Europe on the same track. I don't have to, to test so much uh, this weekend so I can just uh, come here with uh, with my bike, all the setup I have from, from this season, so it's more easy than, than every year, but uh, and yeah, to be uh, riding this week only for fun was much more easier, it make my race, uh, like to approach the race uh, easier. Yeah. Riders then, for race two, MX2 and open, so Roxen and Schiffer for Germany. Jeremy Van Horby, Kenda Dijker, Alex Lapino is going out in this race for Italy alongside David Guarneri. Then we see the rest of the riders down there as well, but Germany in the driving seat, as we said, after moto number one. Gate drops here for the second race. Then it's the MX2 and open, guys, so 250s and 450s yet again, but there might be a couple of 350s in there as well, and it looks like was that Jeffrey Hurlings from the Netherlands who took the whole shot. I think it was. And he's already starting to pull away. Looks like Guarneri in second position for Team Italy as they went through the first turn. Barsha there in third place. Then we've got the, the Belgians and maybe the Germans in there as well. So uh, we've got a rider going down at the back. Couldn't quite see who that was. Blake Baggett looks like he's slightly better place as well, around 10th or 12th place as they come through over the line. So we've got Jeffrey Hurling's lead set. Then it's the number 15 of Kenda Dijker in there. Oh, Glenn Koldenhoff's out. So Koldenhoff for the Netherlands. He's been down. Here's Justin Barsha for Team USA. Riding number three, going after the Dijker. So this is a battle for second position and looks to find a way up the inside. So Barsha through. Barsha through in the second position. De Dijker fighting back, though, for Belgium on the orange KTM and moves across on the American. And takes the line away from him. Barsha oh, just bottoming out there in the ruts at the bottom of the jump. Tadaika carrying more momentum through that turn. Barsha making a bit of a mistake, but Ken Tadaika on home soil wouldn't want to be beaten here as Team America look on and Van Horbeek's out. So Jeremy Van Horbeek is absolutely beside himself. Van Horbeek out of seventh position. Oh, and uh, his teammate getting into problems with uh, Barsha. So Barsha goes down. Looked like he tagged the rear wheel. Or the foot peg there of Kenda Dijker, trying to make a move that never looked like it was really on. And now he's in amongst it with Ken Roxon, Kenda Dijker, and Tanel Leok. So suddenly we have a three-way battle for, or a four-way battle for third place. It's Ken Roxon, though, who finds himself in second. Barsha, number three, on the left side. Second rider in shot on the red Honda. He's in third, the yellow Suzuki. Of Tanel Leo, number 30, he is in fourth, and then we've got Kenda Dijker, number 15, in fifth place. So we've got Jeffrey Hurlings of the Netherlands leading as Barsha gets past there. 
the American by the Belgian Kendadaika once again. An absolutely fantastic crowd and atmosphere all around this Lommel circuit. First came here back in 1981, 31 years ago. Bosch are getting out of shape. Well, he's certainly entertaining here. So too, Roxon on the MX2 machine. Hanging it out there in second position at the moment. Barsha coming under pressure. Uh, sorry, Roxon coming under pressure. Coming through turn four. Into the rhythm section. Dyke has got the jump. He's got the drive. He's going to put the nose right across Kenny Roxon going into the turn. Who keeps it in there, Roxon? They're going to be side by side down the start finish straight. And over the line they go. Dyke just gets a nose ahead. So Belgium take a point away from Germany. Got a rider, just uh, a couple of back markers there, but look at this. Tanel Leo, number 30 on the Suzuki on the left, has found a way onto the rear wheel and past Kandadaika, then he makes a mistake, but Tadaika, no way through there. There's 48. That's Guineri. Guineri just down in sixth place at the moment, coming under attack from Justin Barsha, the American, and he goes through on that red number three machine and pushes the Italian back to sixth place. Here's Tadaika on the left, protecting the inside line from Tanel Leop. These two going at second position here. Tadaika there at the moment. Oh, <laughs> Ken Tadaika, round the outside, just manages to edge ahead there of Leop. The number eight in the background, that's Luke Stike, the MX2 rider for Australia. He's down in 20th position. His teammate, meanwhile, Todd Waters down in ninth place. Here's Blake Baggett. Number two in a battle with Todd Waters. Waters goes through the number nine Australian there. So he steals a position there from the American. And he moves up into seventh at that stage of the race. So good riding then for Todd Waters here, number nine. Final lap though, Jeffrey Hurlings, number 27. On the Red Bull KTM riding for Team Netherlands. Looks like he's going to take the victory here to Dijka. Oh, and Barsha. Barsha has problems on the final lap. He's got a front wheel jam, so I wonder if that's a result of the collision with the Dijka. Well, he needs to get back into the work area to get it fixed because he can't do with any more outside assistance. So it'll be interesting to see where he comes home. But Hurlings rounds out the final turn. It's been a one-man demolition here in this race. Almost a minute clear of the rest of the field. That'll be Kenda Dyker or Tanel Leot, will it? Official confirmation then. Hurlings, Leot did get it on the final lap. To Dyker pushed to third for Belgium. Roxens takes fourth in Germany. And then it was Guineri, Italy. Bag it up to six ahead of Marcus Schiffer and Todd Waters. So once again, two Germans inside the top eight. Anstey Borg, Muskan, Tonkov, Karev. Barsha did rejoin the race. And uh, on that final lap, and at 14 points, how crucial will that be for Team USA at the end of the day's racing? Germany, look at that, massive. 22 points clear of USA at the moment with a race to go. Remember, you can drop your worst score, so it can still tighten up at any stage during that final race. Great Britain down in ninth. Not having a great nation here this weekend, but they can improve. It felt amazing, you know, I did really well. Took the whole shot thanks to the Federation, gave me a first game pick, and then it was pretty easy to bring it home. Uh, one minute about a minute, but just have a short break the second motor, so get a quick recover now and uh, get back to the gate again. Hope to do well. The second motor is going to be really tough to beat uh, Tony, but I'm going to give my best. So, Jeffrey Hurlings then. A comfortable winner in that first race, but to know Leoc. Kenda Dijker, Ken Roxon, David Guarneri, Blake Baggett, Marcus Schiffer, Todd Waters, great ride for the Australian. Marvin Muskan down in uh, 11th, just behind his teammate Xavier Borg, but uh, Germany still in control after two races. Well, on the Saturday night, we had the Ustream Annual Awards and uh, on the stage, Mr. Vito Apolito, Dr. Wolfgang Schrub, and of course the youth stream president, Giuseppe Luongo. They open the evening, and uh, 
Awards are up for grabs. Were for uh, Brazil. Semiagure picking up an award in Russia for the Snowcross and, of course, MX1, MX2. Steve Dixon of Matsley Basin picked up uh, Circuit of the Year. Tim Geiser was a 125 European and FIM Junior World Champion, of course. And Mel Pocock, the UEM 250 European Champion. Chiara Fontanese was the FIM Women's Motocross World Champion. Dominated that series. And Matthias Walkner, the MX3 World Champion from Austria. The first Austrian winner since Heinz Kinigadner in 84 and 85, doing it on a KTM as well. Jeffrey Hurlings, of course, the FIM MX2 Motocross World Champion. On a Red Bull KTM, KTM picking up Team of the War, uh, Team of the Year award as well. Red Bull KTM, and of course, uh, KTM winning manufacturers in MX1, MX2, and MX3. Tony Cairoli, six-time world champion, and uh, four of those in FIM MX1. Red Bull KTM and Tony Cairoli, of course, again winning in all categories. So FIM winners, World Champion, MX3 World Champion, Jeffrey Hurlings MX2, and Antonio Cairoli MX1, 2012. Welcome back to part four, led by Neil Prince, Tommy Sell, Jake Nichols and Max Anstey come together to form Team Great Britain. We caught up with them earlier. Neil, it's your first year as team manager for Great Britain. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling quite good actually, like um, it's been a little bit busy on the build up to it, I've been a few times to Lommel and to Bergen to check the guys out riding, um, but to be honest, they're three like amazing riders, so um, you know they've got a really good program going, their results have shown that um, this year, so basically just come have a look at them, check everything's okay and make sure they've got enough passes and uh, the team's taken care of for the weekend, and that's pretty much it, and the rest is down to them really. Tommy, how have the preparations been on the 450? It's been good. I rode it for the last three weeks. Uh, we had the last GP last week that I rode the 250 at, and then uh, I'm back on the 450 this week. I rode a couple of times, and I feel really good, so I feel confident coming into this weekend. Jake, firstly, congratulations, fourth in the World Championship. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's, um, it was great to get that last weekend. It's um, been a long time uh, working hard for that. And uh, yeah, great confidence boost coming into the uh, Motocross Nations this weekend. We've got a really strong team, um, the other two guys are very good on the 450 and, and uh, yeah, I mean it's going to be tough in the sand for everyone but um, if there's three riders that, uh, that can put it on top I think it's us three, definitely. Max and Steve, who we also saw you have a really great race in Lirop in the World Championship. I guess kind of proving why Neil Prince chose you for the team this year. Well, you know, I, I enjoy the sand and uh, and it's great to give me the opportunity to ride the 450 here in the open class and uh, I just want to go and get Team GB uh, their best results so far and go out and have lots of fun. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good, good day.
Everybody's really pumped for this event, and uh, for sure I'm also really pumped to ride for Italy. And uh, let's hope we have some uh, more luck than the years before. And uh, who knows, maybe finish on the podium with Italy will be a great result on this uh, Lombard circuit. Because you never know here on the sand till the last moto what happens. So uh, let's cheer for Italy. Must have done 12 or 13 motocross of nations, so I think more than anyone by a long way. But uh, I'm happy to go out uh, at this event and, and hopefully do a great race for New Team New Zealand and also for uh, all the sponsors and uh, finish my career hopefully with a good race. It's a great experience to be part of it, riding for your country. It's uh, just an amazing feeling. Super happy to be here. It's always good to come back in the sand and. I think anything is possible to, uh, you know, we really wanted to finish on the podium. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is possible. My personal goal is to win the MX2 class again, like I did the last couple of years. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Third and final race sent down on the grid, MX1, MX Open. It's the 350s and 450s, if there are any 350s in there, other than Tony Cairoli and of course, Jeffrey Hurlings. That's the race that everyone wants to see. Jeffrey Hurling's going to the outside, putting his teammate up the inside, so Kai Rowley might have the advantage off the line here in his final race. Gate drops there for the final race today. Germany still in contention, and so too as an outside chance. Belgium, maybe the USA, France, of course, but still got 35 minutes of racing here. Tony Kai Rowley gets a start. Just in uh, Barsha's teammate, Ryan Dungey there in second position. And uh, I thought Barsha was in there as well, around about fifth or sixth position. So Tony Cairoli is there. Ryan Dungey there, Bobrashev there, DeSalle, Barsha, as they all drop through the whooped out circuit here in Lommel. Oh, what is it going to be a very, very tough moto for these guys? No sign of hurlings at the moment as they come through. Where is he? Well, there's hurlings. He comes over the line. On the first lap, he was 28th, and he's already up behind Marcus Schiffer in 15th place and going after him right there. And drops the 350 KTM right across the front of the Suzuki German rider. But Max Nagel up in uh, sixth place at the moment. There's Tony Cairoli. He has a commanding lead already. Here's second and third. Barsha, oh, he gets it wrong. And so too does his teammate Dungey, and he goes down. And the crowd go mad here, they erupt. There's Bobrashev going up the inside of... Was that the cell? I think it might have been. So suddenly, Genny Bobrashev finds himself in third place. De Salle taking it straight back though, on that yellow Suzuki, riding number 13 for Team Belgium. They've got the French rider just behind him, Gauthier Paul, and in fourth, he's had a good motor across the nations this weekend. To now Lee up there as well, the second yellow Suzuki jumping out to the very left hand side. He's got Barsha up the inside. Barsha coming under pressure. Or was it? No, it was uh, Hurling. So Hurling's already on the charge. And on the back of these guys in about four laps. That is an impressive display of riding from Jeffrey Hurling of the Netherlands. There's your classification at the bottom there. Oh, Jeffrey Hurling's replay. That's where he passed Justin Barsha, number three, the American, pushing him back to third. Question is, though, how much time does he need to find himself on the rear wheel of Antonio Cairoli, Gauthier Paulin, and Justin Barsha going at it. Gauthier Paulin holds the aces at the moment. That's him there on the green Kawasaki, riding number four for Team France. That's Cairoli. He's got the whole start line or pit lane area. At least. But look at those lap times. Hurlings. Much quicker. Ah, oh, Josh Coppins. He's in retirement in the second race here. His final moto in his career. Not the way that he wanted to go out of his uh, nations. Oh, Bobrashev's out. Genny Bobrashev has a big crash. So Bobrashev out of fifth place. On board with Max Nagel. Max Nagel having a great ride in eighth. That will be enough to keep Germany in the driving seat and pick up their first motor across the nations. There's Kenneth Eicher having a good ride. He is in fifth place. 
And Max Nagel there, Team Germany now in sixth. So this will be enough. Marcus Schiffer, his teammate, down in 14th at the moment. He's been a great anchorman here all weekend long. And the Germans, well, it's their race to lose with 10 minutes plus two laps to go. So about 15 minutes to run. Bobrashev out. So Russia going out of it here in the second, in the third, third and final race. Second race for him. Oh, Waters out as well. So number nine, Todd Waters, the Australian. Tony Cairoli though, despite the challenge from Jeffrey Hurlings, closing right in in the final stages. Antonio Cairoli just has one more turn to go. Hurlings tried the matchup between Hurlings and Cairoli. Looks to be going the Italian's way. He goes past the monster rig. He salutes the crowd. He punches the air with delight. He pulls a big handful of throttle and throws the bike down. And look at that for a celebration. Antonio Cairoli has just beaten the fastest man in the world in the sand around Lommel, the toughest track in the world as well. Confirmation then. Antonio Cairoli wins it for Italy. Jeffrey Hurlings for the Netherlands second. Justin Barsha, a great ride for him in the end. In third ahead of Tanel Leoc, Kenda Dijkert, Max Nagel, Dessau, Paulant, Ryan Dungey and Gonsalves. Max Anstey, a great ride for him in 11th and Tommy Searle was 12th. But what about this? The official confirmation that Germany are your official Monster Energy Motocross of Nations winners. 25 points, they edge out Belgium by four, the USA by another 10 behind. So that's your podium. The Netherlands fourth, and Italy, they were fifth with France, Estonia, Great Britain, Portugal, and Australia. That's your podium. Team Germany. Max Nagel, Ken Roxon, and Marcus Schiffer. Mr. Vito Ippolito, the FIM president. Handing Team USA the third place trophy. Ryan Dungey, Justin Varsha, Blake Baggett. They'll be hurting right now, but they'll look back on this. So too will Roger De Costa. Maybe think that one day they can improve to get back here and maybe reverse that result. Team Belgium on home soil. Received their trophy from Prince Philippe and Mr. Vito Ippolito. Tomada Sout, Kenda Dijkert and Jeremy Van Horbeek. And there is His Royal Highness Prince Philippe of Belgium handing the winner's trophy, the Chamberlain trophy to Team Germany. Marcus Schiffer in the middle, Max Nagel on the left and Ken Roxon on the right. Hubert Nagel, the team manager, the father of Max Nagel, the proudest man in the world. And there he is down there. Gold plates for the top three there. Germany, are oh, you world champions? And that's what it's all about this weekend, the Chamberlain Trophy. first when you start out on this weekend do you, do you think this was going to be possible um actually not you know there's a, there are a lot of strong teams out there but friday um we were, our goal was you know to, to come on the podium and um that was our goal so to take the win is absolutely amazing you know we have done a great job the whole time and i'm really happy with my with my results um only what i did but max and, and marcus they killed it too and uh, the worst uh, result we had was a 14th place in that in that last moto, and it's just so amazing. You know, I, I was yelling so much in the uh, in the pit lane just so they uh, they uh, that, that we win together. It's it's, it's amazing, and uh, I think the first time ever. And congrats to uh, to the team, my teammate. They did awesome. Everybody did good. Thank you, again, Marcus. We're gonna come over to you. How tough was it out there today on track? I mean, that third moto, it was pretty choppy. It was the hardest race of my life, I think. Eh? Uh, the first moto of mine was good. I was happy with the seventh place. I think after a few years, my best result. So I'm so happy about the results today. Uh, unbelievable. Congratulations. I'm going to come and squeeze in the middle of you and come and have a word with Max. Max, congratulations. I spoke to you just before that third moto and you guys, you didn't even know that you were topping that leaderboard. How does it feel? Just great. Um, the race was, was not so bad. Uh, it was really good. 
Uh, in the beginning I was dropping back a little bit, in the end I found my rhythm and I could pass some guys back like Clemore. Because in the pit they were cheering so hard, like I need to pass Clemore for the points and uh, I have done everything I can. And now it's just an amazing feeling, especially after like uh, with the, all the injury I had to come back and I've finished the single season with the world title for Germany. It's an uh, amazing feeling, I'm, I'm so happy and the German crowds were awesome around the track. They were cheering so hard and that's just pushing you forward all the time. Well, apart from the Chamberlain Trophy, Tony Cairoli was the overall winner in MX1, Rocks in MX2 and Hurlings in MX Open. The final race of the season sees Team Germany win the FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations for the first time in history. Ken Rocks and Marcus Schiffer and Max Nagel winning by four points over Team Belgiums, with defending champions Team USA losing for the first time in eight years. It's also been a fantastic season in the FIM World Motocross Championship. We'll be back to do it all again next year, so make sure you join us. We'll see you next year. Bye!